Trains on the big screen. It's something that interests everyone, never mind if you're a train enthusiast or not, and these are my top five picks for trains of fame. We're also going to take a look at that BR stand before again, see how that tender got on, and now that we've finished messing about with it and making it all look nice and pretty and what have you. Hello good people, welcome to Iron Horse Weekly. So this week I am going to pick five of my top five famous locomotives slash trains you can see in films. I spend a lot of time watching TV and films and a lot of time playing with trains so you get the two together it really makes me happy. Do remember before we get into this that these are my top fives, your top five might be different, I might have missed something so if I have missed something or you disagree with the top five I've chosen and you can think of something else you'd rather have selected in the uh, the rundown if you will let me know in the comments that's what it's all about isn't it having a chat and a discussion so without further ado let's have a look at my top five locomotives from film that you can model number five hogwarts express from harry potter now we all know harry potter we've all at least heard of the books and some of us have seen the film there's quite a famous locomotive in there it's actually a hall class disguised as a castle class steam locomotive quite a popular engine it was actually built in april 1937 at swindon work the great western railway it was number 5972 and it was first allocated to carmarthen south wales where it remained until 1951 in the Harry Potter films, the locomotive is depicted pulling the Hogwarts Express. A fictional train made up of four, five, British Rail Mark I coaches and carriages. Scenes were filmed at King's Cross Railway Station, Benfilm Viaduct and the North Yorkshire Moors Railway, as well as bits and pieces inside the train as well. When it was filmed, Alton Hall carried Hogwarts Express headboards on the smoke box and the school crest was on the tender. It was also painted a crimson brown as opposed to the usual GWR Green and of course naming it a castle class when it was actually a whole class has become somewhat of a preservation railway joke. Now as far as modelling the locomotive goes Hornby actually do a few different versions of this locomotive depending on how how far back you go. I believe there's a railroad version as well available for various different prices and they also do the Alton Hall locomotive and the Hogwarts Express decorated one as well. So that's a really good option to have in terms of which one you want to model. If you want to model the real one, you can. If you want to model the fantasy one from the film, you can do that as well. Now I tried like, like a madman. Unfortunately, I couldn't get my hands on one for filming. So you just have to make do with a few pictures. Moving swiftly on. Number four, the railway children. Now... In the Railway Children, there's a few different trains and locomotives which feature. The most famous is probably going to be the Green Dragon, the Lancashire and Yorkshire Class 25. Uh, that's the one that, for some reason, seems to be the first result chucked at you from Google when you mention the Railway Children. However, for me, when you're actually looking at it, you've got the this little brown tank engine. I forget its name. LBSCR, I think it is. I'm not going for steam engines, but that is actually the one that you see the most of and that is the one involved in the crash scene it's also the one that pulls the old gentleman's coach with him as well so for me in that regard i would actually say that the uh the tank engine tank engine is actually the main one modeling it's really good because batman actually do make if you can find it still they make a collector's edition set with the coaches and everything else and the locomotive all together which you should be able to see the footage of that now on screen which i borrowed from jen it's a really good little locomotive and modeling that one is really easy to do green dragon however if you want to model that one you're going to have to look for a kit i'm afraid nothing i can find ready to run in double o gauge number three saint trinian's great train robbery now there's two main locomotives in this film uh, one is a war department austerity huntley 060 and the other one appears to be a J50, but actually it's not a J50, it's a austerity made to look like a J50. So I would say if you want to model the trains from this movie, it might just be easier to buy yourself a J50 and an austerity as opposed to buying an austerity and another austerity and trying to make it look like a J50. 
that way to me madness lies but if you fancy a bit of a challenge i'm sure it's not too difficult to do it's also a really good film as well it's always worth a watch this saying trillions number two lion the Tipfield Thunderbolt. Oh yes, Lion or Tipfield Thunderbolt. This is probably one of my top famous um, trains of fame, if you will. Uh, it's a really nice locomotive. The, the film with Tipfield Thunderbolt is fantastic. If you've never seen it before, it's a brilliant healing comedy. You can find it on most places now. Modelling the locomotive is again, thankfully, in ready, to, ready to run for double O gauge really easily. Rapido have got both Lion and they've also got the actual Tipfield Thunderbolt available in a collector's edition set as well as Lion available separately. You can also buy the other vehicles using the film including the bus and you can buy Dance House and the Lorry at Y and the tow brake van and everything else as they appear in the film. So depending which size you want to go for you can actually model them as well. So it's really nice to see that option available. Of course, Lion is a Liverpool and Manchester railway locomotive built in 1838. But I believe the one that we see in the film was rebuilt at Crewe in the 1930s. So it's not exactly the same as it was. And of course, the locomotive was redecorated in more vibrant colours to help with the whole Technicolor filming thing. So it does look a little bit more vibrant in in the film than it would in real life, especially when you compare it to Lion. Because Hornby also have a, an option available. I think it's Tiger that they've released. I know they've <laughs> they've been inspired by it. I've I've actually got Lion on long-term loan from Jen, and it's a lovely little locomotive which we'll look at a bit later on. But certainly modelling it, it's easy enough to do, and it's ready to run. And it's simple and it's actually a nice model as well. Number one. We should need that stuff. What are you talking about? Of course you don't know who Gladstone is, do you? What is it, the rocket? That's Gladstone. Lovely line, thank you. Oh, Mr. Porter, what a funny man you are. I absolutely love this film. It's a really old-fashioned black and white comedy and it's silly and it's slapstick and everything else and if you get a chance to watch it i really recommend you you can find it actually on youtube at the minute there's a few channels that have got it uploaded i think the film's so old it's actually outside of the copyright and falls in the public domain now in 1930s it was filmed it's a really nice film to watch and of course gladstone apparently gladstone was a leslie and hawthorne and she was loaned to the makers of the film from the Kent and East Sussex Railway. Um, she has a longer funnel or chimney attached to her to make her look a little bit more eccentric for the film. And she's actually a 240, not an 060. If you look at the wheel configuration, the front set is a little bit smaller. Now, as far as modelling Gladstone goes, there is nothing available ready to run. There are locomotives out there which look very similar and you can do a little bit of this, a little bit of that, a little bit of the other. But there is another option out there. The chap over at Buggles Kelly Railway actually makes a 3D printed body which goes on the old Hornby Electrotrain 060 chassis. So it's an 060 so it's technically wrong but for what you want to use it for and okay the front wheel's a little bit bigger than it should be but it actually looks really nice as you can see from these pictures that I'm overlaying now. It's a good little option to get and of course the body comes just 3D printer, so you need to paint it yourself as well. So it's a bit of a project. So whilst it's not ready to run, it's still not as bad as a a brass built kit because you just put the body, paint it and stick it on the ready to run chassis. Then that comes with a motor and running gear and everything else. So it's something that I'm going to look at doing. I have no idea how much of a success it will be. Um, I, really, I really hope I can, I can make it work and pull it off and everything else because it's It'd be nice to have that alongside this little collection of film trains which I'm intending to build up. It's, it'd be nice to have that alongside this little collection of film trains which I'm intending to build up. I'm hoping to get a, a roster of famous trains, trains of fame if you will. Obviously we're starting the collection off with Lion apparently and then we're going to look at Diesels a bit later down the line as well because this has all been steam focused at the minute. I think we can all appreciate a nice steamy steam engine. But all these models and pictures you've seen weren't mine, they're actually Jenny's. So I think it's only fair we have a little world with Jen and see what she thinks of my top five.
All right, Jen, so I've borrowed your collection today because I just have a severe lack of steam engines in my fleet, despite the fact we, I'm doing a video about steam engines you can model on film. Mm -hmm. You've seen my top five picks, but would you agree with them? And would you replace any with your own? Um, see, I'm not a huge aficionado of steam trains in films and TV. Uh, one that I would pick would be, I think from your own Mr. Porter, I would have actually picked Silver Link, uh, which is actually named in that film. And Hornby have done that in the really nice silvery livery, which is exactly the livery that it is in that film. Um, there's, there's lots of other films I can think of. I'm struggling. There's one which used City of Truro. I'd have to look up what it was. But um, certainly it has featured in film. Um... And um, Great St. Trinian Train Robbery, I would definitely keep in there. I think that's a really great choice. But it's strange that they took a Hunslet Austerity and spent a lot of time and effort making it look like a J50. When if you're just going to repaint it, why not just repaint the Hunslet Austerity to look like a J94? It's a lot easier. Um, so that's a bit strange. And um, if we're going to stretch it a bit, and go for TV series, I would say that the Flockton Flyer with the 64XX Pannier would be uh, an interesting choice as well. But Tipfield Thunderbolt, definitely flavour of the month at the moment. Um, and I think you've got a good choice with that. Jen, thanks very much. You're welcome. Thanks for that, Jen. Oh, thanks for borrowing me your locomotives and your loft as well. Really appreciate it. Thanks very much. What do you think though, folks? What were your top five steam engines or trains of fame? And again, it doesn't have to be a steam engine as such, but for in keeping with this video, it does kind of make sense. And again, we are talking primarily about films, but if you can find a, a locomotive or a train that appears in a, in a TV show or a short series or whatever that that you really like then mention it why not you know it's, it's still a train of fame as long as it appears for more than three seconds i think you can count it as a proper appearance as well so there we are top five trains of fame now let's have a look at that little br standard shall we see how we get on with that thing so here we are again everything's nice and dry from last week i've literally just sprayed a little bit of the vallejo air into this little paint pot thing and it's a gloss finish so i'm just gonna paint it onto the coal and once that's done it needs a bit of time to dry and you can just get it in there because it's all black don't be precious with it but once it's all done and it's dried it'll look an absolute treat and i know that because i've already done it on the P3 looks absolutely fantastic so we're gonna finish it doing this and then we'll call it done easy just goes to show folks that if you do see a locomotive that's requiring just a little bit of work don't be frightened of going for it don't be frightened of going for it a lot of the repairs usually cosmetic they're easy enough to do and if it's electrical, usually it's just a case of a wire that's come off somewhere. Rarely is it to do with a motor failure. And that's it. Okay, jolly good. That's it for this week's episode of Iron Horse Weekly, folks. Do leave a comment down below. And do be sure to share and subscribe as well. And I'll see you all next week. Take care. Bye-bye.